All right, so here's the babies. We're about to take them to their first vet visit. I've got uh, Sadie's in the kennel in the back of my truck already. These are, they, she didn't have but two is all she had. They're two little males. Little old bitty things. Get the other one out. Sadie has done, look how fat they are. Sadie's doing good with them. She's been being a good mama. This one right here is a good bit bigger than that one right there. But so I'm about to load them up. Both of them here, and take them in. Get their tails docked. Let y'all watch me do this. They ain't gonna talk a whole lot. Just gonna get it done. If I can. So this stuff ain't easy. I hate sitting here watching it. Uh, so underneath this catwalk, there's a huge frame support right here that I'm actually basically straddling and laying on top of. I'm on top of the swing, my swing motor right there in the bottom right corner. And then this is the back of the boom too. And it's also, oil is everywhere on this thing. Uh, this, uh, Working on this stuff has gotten very old to me, man.
maybe it was just a fluke and that bolt head broke off i don't know derek said a little piece of metal on the end of it uh, maybe that's all it was I'm, we'll find out as soon as i rev it up and pick the boom up and go to move it we'll see maybe that's all it was i don't know but like i said we'll see so I just tracked into place everything so far so good so maybe maybe it's just a fluke if that little piece of metal or or just the bolts have done gotten weak there's no telling man when you get something that's got tough that kind of hours on anything's possible so i'm gonna start loading today is thursday uh, i have not loaded a load all week this week uh, this is about to be the very first load of the week to uh, try to get get something going here all right what i'm gonna do is i went ahead and back scott in here too on the other side of me i'm gonna load both of them at the same time because i'm having to make a size separation in basically the same trees like a 10 to 14 inch is going to one mill and a 14 inch and bigger is going to another mill so rather than trying to sort through it and throwing stuff out of the way, I just had Scott back in right there. That way, if I pick up something that's small, I throw it over on Scott. If I pick up something that's big, I throw it on Danny to where I can work it. You see, I've got a lot of smaller butted stuff right here that I'm going to be going through. That's number two. Spinning right there. Had to back pedal it just a little bit. Since the whole video was filmed, of course, on Thursday, y'all be watching on Friday. Um, I didn't get my loader going until about uh, one o'clock today, I guess it was. Uh, the part, which was that round cylinder looking thing, they had the, they got the spring in, it came in the Tupelo up there, and the other thing had to come in on UPS, and we kind of messed up when they ordered it, or got it coming, instead of getting it shipped to Columbus, uh, Columbus here, it ended up 
going to uh, Tupelo, so I had to wait on it to get delivered at Tupelo, and it was about 10 before it got delivered up there, and then it's about a two-hour ride from there back to the woods, so Dad got there with it about, I don't know, it was 12 or something, and then um, the guys that were working on Kevin's machine were going to fix it, but they were eating lunch when Dad got there, so I just grabbed some tools, and I got up there and put it back in myself and got it got it back going and thank goodness that evidently it was just something with either the head bolt the bolt the head of the bolt just it given out over time or or whatever i have no idea there's there's no telling what but it blew the head of that bolt off i was worried and we all were worried that it was going to be something actually in the control valve possibly that caused it to do that uh, Kevin's machine, his uh, green processor, I hope that they crank it tomorrow. I uh, packed both of those uh, giant cylinders on it, the stick boom and one main boom cylinder, and that's a major job doing that because you got to have a a press to put the put the rod in to break the nut on it because those rod those rod nuts are are torqued ungodly on an excavator. And no impact is going to touch them. So got both of them done day four yesterday. And then they started on the control valve, taking, they pulled all the oil out of the tank, got it all out, pumped it all out, and took everything, or not, they didn't take everything loose on the control valve. They got everything ready. And so they jumped in there today and got it out and got the new one set in. And that's a lot of lines. Ports have fittings that go in them. So they had to swap every fitting on that control valve over to the new control valve. And in doing that, then you got to put an O-ring on every one of them too when you swap it over. Extremely time consuming to do that. And like I said in the previous video, we this makes the third time that control valve has been pulled out of that machine. And so this time we were not going to reseal that valve. There's something that's not right with it. We never have figured it out because it would just, it would start leaking between the sections, even when it was, when it was new. So the control valve itself is $25,000. There is no telling what the bill is going to be when that job is complete because two cylinders two mechanics control valve uh three days on the job there is there is no telling but uh that's a lot cheaper than buying a new machine and making a payment for four or five years that is Twelve or thirteen thousand dollars a month of a payment. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Maybe they'll get that thing cranked up um, uh, today or Friday while y'all are watching this. Here we'll see. You've seen at the front of the video the puppies. I've had uh, quite a few people ask about the puppies. I've only got two. You know, I wish wish I had one for uh, for everybody, but unfortunately, I don't. Uh, I don't know that I'll breed Sadie again. Sadie has been very difficult to deal with. Um, if you've never had puppies, puppies are very aggravating to deal with. And, and you know, I got to worry about Parvo. I got them in my shop down there. I got her in the shop, got the puppies in the shop. And hopefully they won't get Parvo because if they get it, it's going to kill them. I mean, that's just, all, it's just part of it, you know, but... Um, Sadie's been difficult to deal with. Uh, Y'all have no idea what how much I ride those dogs on my Ranger and, and mess with them, work with them on my Ranger. I, I rarely show it, but what happens is when I when I open that shop door and I cr and just open the shop door, the dogs absolutely go bananas. I mean, they lose their freaking minds. To the point that they are almost possessed that they just they go completely crazy 
because they won't own that Ranger. They want to play. They want to be on it. So yesterday I was going to do something to crank the Ranger and backed it out. Sadie went ballistic. I walked back in the shop after I drove the Ranger out and one of those puppies was laying. She had slung it. She had it in her mouth holding it and had slung it out into the shop floor there. Yeah, obviously it didn't hurt it, but um, very, very frustrating times right now for me dealing with uh, Sadie. Yeah, it's not very easy and I can't put her out there in the big kennel because Tater is right there side by side, and I need to, and, and it, the chances of Parvo are just, are too great. So we'll see. But I got their tails chopped off today, got that done, got their dew claws fixed for them. And uh, we'll be running Saturday. So hope y'all have a good weekend. We'll catch y'all later. Later, Taters.